another practice in the books, but the good news is the preseason is actually going to look a little bit like a real game, kind of, maybe. Yeah, uh, at least the first 15 minutes or yeah. 12 minutes, uh, starters will play. Uh, not a lot, but they will be out there. That's very exciting. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. Day 10 of training camp in the books, the final practice before Friday's preseason opener. So we have a lot to talk about today. We want to mention the starters getting a chance to play. We'll kind of give the positives and negatives of that decision. More about the Jason Kelsey injury. Cam Jurgens now the first team center for we'll see how long. And then we'll get in some practice observations and some of the player interviews after practice, including Jalen Rager speaking for the first time in quite a while. Uh, but let's start with uh, the starters. Nick Sirianni said the first one or two series will go to the starters in the preseason. That means Jalen Hurts. And it's he didn't get any preseason action last year. I think this is a good thing. Yeah, it has to be a good thing. And uh, look, they do a lot of things different. You know, this coaching staff and this, you know, analytics tells them not to do this, don't do this, don't do that. So it's nice to know that somewhere in there uh, playing in the preseason still plays some some small role, uh, some link to the past when there were seven preseason games and the starters played every snap of them. I had Merrill talking to me about it today. You know, back where they played set <laughs> and Jaws played in all seven. I know Merrill, but things have changed. Things have changed. But uh, I do think it's important, especially on defense, because you think about all the new pieces they have on defense. Like yeah. It's generally the same offense, obviously a couple of new receivers. Uh, but on defense, you have new new guys at every level and you have a new scheme. Now, I don't know how much JG is going to show as far as changing fronts and stuff. But <laughs> I would think not much. I would think not much as well. But uh, I look – you know, getting some chemistry, a couple of new linebackers. You got um, a bunch of cornerbacks. Um, you know, Bradbury's new. Um, obviously, up front, you have new guys, Reddick. And so uh, I don't know if he's up front or a linebacker. You, you can interpret that how you will. But yeah, a lot of new pieces, a lot of new guys. And there's something to be said for getting some chemistry at full speed against another team. And I think it's important. On offense, I would think if they put together a nice long drive to start the game, Get him out of there. Yep. Leave on a high note if he can. Yeah, and defensively, uh, you'd like to see a couple stops and get him out of there. Mm -hmm. And might be the last time we see him until Detroit. It, I mean, it probably will be. And they were planning on playing Jalen Hurts last year. You remember, uh, right into up in the like right before the game, he had to get rushed to the hospital uh, with abdominal pain. But the thought then was that they were going to play him. So. It's not like this is a departure from what they were thinking last year. It's just they didn't get an opportunity to play him in the preseason last year. Right. And the big question is who's going to be on the O-line. Obviously, mm -hmm. Cam Jurgens will be playing center. Um, I feel pretty good about him. He's had a good camp. He, uh, it was his first game, so it'll, it'll be a little different. But um, left tackle will be interesting. I would think Dillard, uh, Mulata will both, and obviously – a lot as a starter, but I would I would think they'll play. They this will the, today was their second today being Wednesday their second practice limited, but they didn't look real limited. They did team drills. They did team drills. Yeah. They're just listed as limited, I guess, because I mean it was a shorter practice. I guess the number of reps they they're allowed to do by the team's own protocol to bring guys back from anything. Uh, they, Sirianni. So Sirianni was asked about putting Jalen in harm's way. Yeah, and that was with the thinking that maybe these guys wouldn't be back. My theory here is that he knows one of them is going to be back at least. And right. they wouldn't put Jalen out there without a with, starting caliber left With guy. Coyote, I was seeking. They wouldn't do I don't think they'd do it. I, I agree. I, I, I'd i be surprised if, if Milad is not out there. Mm -hmm. And the, the way the concussion protocol works, there's different levels, and you've heard us talk about it. Um, as it was explained to me by a team official today, they're still in concussion protocol during today's practice. And the last phase to get cleared – is if you can get through physical activity like a practice without any symptoms, without having a headache or whatever whatever the symptom might be. Um, so as, assuming they did that and they both looked fine after practice. And Jordan stuck around and signed autographs for a half hour. So. Jordan Jordan signed autographs for longer than he was practicing. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, he was out there uh, for, for quite a while. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure he's fine. Uh, so – um, they'll test him. They'll give him like a final baseline test, and I would think um, he, he'd play. Yeah. And and uh, I can't wait to see him. 
Yeah, it'll be exciting. You got anything else on that? I, I think it's time for some practice ops. What do you think? I think we should do it. It was a short practice today, only an hour. It was a green practice, but it was a short practice. Yeah, I was a little surprised they went so short, and they weren't in full pads. Right. I wonder if if they weren't planning on playing the starters, if they would have used this as their game, but they didn't. I mean, this was not – sometimes you can tell when a practice is taking place of game reps, that they'll really kind of ramp it up. Right. Uh, they did the opposite. They ratcheted it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they did. That was interesting. I did not expect that. Um, it was – yeah, they were out there for an hour. Um, it, was, it was good practice, but mm -hmm. uh, I was a little surprised at the nature of it. But, I mean, I'd like to see the Stars play into the second quarter, but that's certainly not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think uh, – I don't think you're going to get your wish there. They moved practice up an hour today. It started at 9 again. It wasn't quite as hot as Tuesday. It was still a steamy day, and – Moving it up an hour probably helps. It was sneaky, sneaky hot. Yeah, a little bit. Not not nearly as bad as Tuesday. But I'll tell you what, when I you look alive today. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> I, was, I yesterday. was a little worried about you. Uh, some guy tweeted to me, he's like, Rube, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> but I mean, we're basically coming right in here after after practice. Mm -hmm. So you're a little, you know, a little hurt. But today, I mean, I, I, I went out, took the dog for a walk about six, and it was actually like pleasant out. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I can breathe out here. So um, and I think next week looks low 80s. Yeah. So should be good. Pract there'll be a practice Sunday and a practice Tuesday. So might be might have to wear like jackets and I, I don't think that'll be. But you never know. Uh, right. Housekeeping. No, Jason Kelsey. They have Cam Jurgens out there with the ones. That's something to watch. I, I really think that these reps will help Cam. I mean, it's, it, we're talking about he already had a bunch of them earlier in camp, and now he's going to get a few weeks here. Yeah, and you think about the interior of that old line now, and you know you have you have Dickerson and and um, and Jurgens and and Samalo, uh, three guys who never played together, and uh, it's good work. I mean, who knows about Samalo's future? But it's great work for for uh, for Dickerson and for especially for Jurgens. Yeah. And it's it's not like it's a practice or two. I mean, he's going to be the guy there for a few weeks and those joint practices which are going to be a big yeah. key and let's be honest he needs to work more than kelsey does yeah um obviously i mean he's most likely going to be the starting center next year i, I i'll be surprised if he's not mm -hmm. i mean I, I think this is it for jason you never know and i'm sure he hasn't completely decided yet but um it's this is going to be great work for him yeah uh the injury report's growing a little bit nothing too serious it doesn't seem but uh, Anthony Harris was added to the list today with a, a tooth designation. I found he got a tooth extracted, so not his choice to be held out of practice. They held him out. I've never had that, but it doesn't sound fun. Getting a tooth extracted? Yeah. I, I did have that several years ago. Um, it's really not a big deal. Yeah. It's really not a big deal. I, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm sure it was, like you said, it wasn't his call. Yeah. Um, I would have practiced. But then again, I once had root canal at nine in the morning in Lawrenceville and made it to the free at noon three hours later in West Philly. I, I feel very lucky. I've never had uh, like dental, I had braces and all that, but I never had like dental problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like 10 years ago, I had, I had a few things. Um, it's never as bad as you think. It's just the idea of it grosses me out. Really? I, I get a little squeamish with stuff like that. Really? Like I dental would... work and like any kind of needles. I'm out. Really? Yeah. I don't mind needles. I actually enjoy them. My dad was telling me, <laughs> I almost skipped over that completely. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but um, <laughs> I get squeamish about it a little bit to the point where like when I get blood drawn or like I get a shot, I'm not going to pass out, but I tell the nurse, like, I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. I'm going to look over here. Really? Just take care of whatever you have to take care of and let me know when I can leave. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. Well, anyway, it, I, I don't, you know, the back. one thing I don't yeah. like is when I'm walking down the street and a grand piano falls on my head. Yeah, uh, that, that can hurt. That, I don't like yeah. that. I've, that's happened a few times yeah. and I try to avoid that. Yeah, I see that in Looney Tunes sometimes. <laughs> it is. It's big. Their heads pop out and they play the piano. <laughs> uh, anyway, Harris, they, they held him out. I, I think he'll be back. Uh, well, not tomorrow, but he'll be back at the next practice. Can, can, can I reveal what you said when we saw him walking out without a helmet? No. Okay. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny. Um, you can go ahead. It was a mean joke. <laughs> we see Anthony Harris. And look, he hasn't had much of a camp. He yeah. hasn't been awful, but he just hasn't made any plays. He is a veteran, so it's like I don't know how much he's getting out of this either. Yeah, so we see him walking out, 
um, without a helmet. So he's obviously not practicing at that point. We don't know why, but Dave said, Oh good. We'll see some good safety play today. <laughs> it was mean. And he hasn't been bad. It's just, he hasn't made plays. Right. And some of the other guys have uh, the other safeties have made like Marcus Epps has made plays. Oh yeah. Andre Sashery has made plays. Even yeah. Kayvon Wallace has started to make some. Plays. Kayvon Wallace had some bad days, mm-hmm. but he's also shows up yeah. in a way that Anthony Harris doesn't. And on that topic, Jaquiski Tart missed, I believe, his third day. With a, yeah, I don't know more about this. It's just personal. Yeah. Uh, so I hope everything's all right. Personal when reasons. When something but, like that happens, personal reasons, your first thing is I just hope everything's okay. Yeah, but he is missing significant time here. Yes, he and, is. like, he's – he talked – like, he hasn't made plays either. I know he's learning a defense, but we thought he'd have a chance to really push for playing time, maybe even be a starter. Sure. Um, it didn't look great before he left. And obviously he's missing time now. So uh, you hope everything's okay, but not great for his chances to to be an impact player on this team. Or even to make the team. Yeah, you're right. That's not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, the, 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 the highlight of the day. I'm scrolling through here. The highlight of the day was Appreciate the sound effects. The uh, the deep pass to AJ Brown <coughs> Excuse me. in seven on sevens. And it was kind of what he talked about yesterday, AJ Brown, late hands. Uh, right. And it's something we've seen him do quite a bit. And the idea here is that he doesn't reveal to the defensive back the passes in the air until the last second. So the DB, like you could tell on this play, James Bradbury had no idea the ball was even in route. And then he, A.J. Brown quickly turns around, back shoulders it, catches a touchdown, and Bradbury sitting there looking really confused because he didn't even know the ball was coming. Yeah, I, I've never heard of a guy doing that before. Uh, you know how they say every time you watch a baseball game, you see something new, <laughs> something you've never seen before. Uh, I, you know, and I was looking for because AJ talked about that, but it makes sense. Um, that's a real, that's a real um, tip for, mm-hmm. you know, for D backs. You know, oh, he's putting his hands up. Ball's coming. Yeah. Um, and even if it's a last ditch effort for them, they can get their hands up. Yeah. Um, so I think it's. I think you have to be really like it's it's an extra thing. You're trying to focus on the ball. You're trying to, you know, focus on the corner. The, the, the maybe the sideline. There's so many things to you know. Where's the help coming from? There's so many things happening, and to have the presence of mind to play games like that, yeah, um, uh, that's really something. It's next level. Yeah, it's next level, and it just shows you what a cerebral player aj brown is and and we've seen him do it now it's like it's not like he talked about it and we've seen one play it, we've seen it a few times in this camp yeah yeah it's pretty cool yeah. uh him and slay have, this was against bradbury but him and slay have some real battles and for a, a while in camp i'd say brown was beating him more often than not yeah today it was back and forth there was one play early in practice slay jumped it got a hand in knocked the pass away and then a little later it was a similar route Brown was just so strong coming back to the ball, and he out-muscled Slay. I really think those two going against each other every day is probably helping Slay more than anyone. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, and it's like, how much help does he need? He's already a pro bowler. Yeah. Well, the, if you look at since – even since he's been here, who's he struggled against a little bit? Yeah. The bigger receivers. Yeah. Uh, we talked to Aaron Moorhead. We'll get to that a little, a little deeper later, but – uh, I asked him about just the the work everyone was getting um, and just how – I mean, it's really high level between the corners and the receivers because I can't tell you the last time they had two good corners and two good receivers. Now, Devontae has been out there, but when's the last time you had this level of one-on-one matchup at Eagles practice? Like, I don't even know, ever. You know, they, there's been times they've had a couple good corners, like Lito and mm-hmm. Sheldon or Bobby and Troy, but they, they never had two good – receivers at the same time so now you have both and the level of competition is so high and it just makes the whole team better and and aaron aaron made this point of just how 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 vocal the corners and receivers are after the after the reps of Mm -hmm. why did you do this i've noticed you do this keep an eye you know and just kind of helping each other get better he said it's it's competition but it's also the whole thing is about making us better as a team, and, and that's what's happening. It was, it was interesting. I think a lot of that's slay. Because that really – like the, the coaches don't interfere with that. Yeah. You know, like that – they have – the players have to do that on their own. Absolutely. And, and the, like you don't even really hear coaches encourage it because like that has to be – Has a, to be natural. Has to be natural. Organic. Has to be a, a step that the players take on their own. 
And since Slay's been here, he's done that with everyone. Yeah. And it, normally it's him giving out tips, you know, even last year to Devonte. But I then they started a little back and forth. Devonte would say, "Hey, this is what I thought," because Devonte is a little wise beyond his years in terms of route running right. and uh, just those little parts of the game. But I, I feel like Slay is a big reason that environment has grown the way it has. Yeah, I think it's a great point. Uh, AJ Brown gets a ton of targets. That was the same thing today, but. I also thought Jalen Hurts spread the ball around a little bit more today, and I thought he had one of his better days of practice in general. It was a short practice, but uh, I thought he was sharp. I th- I really feel like the last few days, for the most part, he's been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, he had that one really bad day, and then he had one kind of mediocre day. Um, he's getting – like I, I mean, I've, I keep harping on it, but he's just getting such good work. He's getting challenged, mm-hmm. and I think it's making him better. I mean, there's no easy reps. You know, there's no reps where, okay, Izell, you know, I'm throwing it out, or whoever. I mean, we have all seen the, some of the corners. I, you know, I don't I want to rip anyone who might be watching. So I know Izell is not. But, yeah, if you have if you have one corner that's good and one that's bad, you're getting some easy reps. And he's getting challenged every snap. And, uh, yeah, I I think overall I'm just encouraged by, by the way he's throwing the football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought today was one of his best. I think over the last week he's thrown the deep ball pretty well. Maybe the last few practices. The deep balls look nice. Yeah, yeah. He's not under throwing it. Look, it's practice, um, but that was an issue for him last year. Mm-hmm. Um, he seems to be, I don't know, judging the receiver because it was never an arm strength thing. It was just a he's just not throwing it yeah. where he needs to put it. But he has lately, and he like he was hitting. He had Rager. On, on an out route, he had Pascal for a touchdown. And, and the out route from Rager was a nice ball, and it was a nice catch from Rager. And, and we're going to talk about some of his comments later. Uh, he showed up. He's shown up a little bit in, in training camp. He hasn't – you know, last year he had those two spectacular catches in one-on-ones. He hasn't made a play like that this summer. But I also think he's been a little more consistent. I, yeah. I still think he, he needs more consistency. Yeah. But uh, – Slightly encouraged by that. I, I think he's playing well enough to make the team. I do too. I do too. I think he's he he hasn't been bad. I mean, he's I mean, Devontae hasn't practiced, Greg Ward hasn't practiced. He's gotten, you know, he's gotten a lot of reps with the twos, but taking advantage of him, not feeling sorry for himself. And and um, when he gets play when he gets time with the ones, he's made some plays. He made that his nice catch today was with the ones in right. front of Darius Slay. Right. Um I would I would agree with that, and again I think he's got to do it in the games. But from what I've seen, they're not going to cut him. I, I still think they could yeah. trade him. And I look, I think that's possible too. And I understand people get frustrated when they hear about him performing well, sure, in training camp because we've been down this road before. We did it last year, and people got they, people kind of talked themselves into him being a good player, and then it didn't work out. And we're not saying he's going to be a good player, but when they make these decisions about you know who to keep on the roster, all they have to go on is what they've done in practice and based on what he's done in 10 sessions, I'd say he's probably going to make this team. I mean, if, if they, I mean, if it comes down to him and Greg Ward, they're going to keep Rager. Yeah. Uh, if it comes down to him and Covey for, for, if there's, if they keep five, be interesting because they need a returner. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think it might be Covey in that case. Uh, but I that's what I would do. But I, I think they would still go Rager. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe be interesting. They'd probably keep six. Yeah. Uh, Zach Pascal. He had a heck of a day. He had a nice day. He doesn't look like a guy who lost sixteen pounds a week ago. You know. <laughs> Threw up fifty times. I, I, when he said that, I was like, Did "You say 15? He's like, "No, 50. <laughs> Uh, he does. He looks good. He's he's strung together a few and good he, days. He, he high pointed two touchdown balls. He might be able to help him in the red zone. I mean, he's got a lot of touchdowns for limited catches. Fifteen touchdowns. Fifteen touchdowns. Um, yeah, that's a lot. He's, he's one of those guys who has a nice knack in the end zone, and um, <laughs> certainly, if he's pl- if he plays like he has the last few days. Um, he's going to get playing time. Like I don't really know where he fits in, you know, behind yeah. Quez and 
and the two starters. But if he if he plays like this, he's gonna they're gonna have to use him. Yeah, at least in situations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Noah Tongiai, our buddy Noah to go. I, I have to say Tongiai now because I got yelled at. I know some of the I, I you still call him Noah to go. That's yeah. more of a reason to call him that. <laughs> uh, but he's made some plays recently, and they're missing Grant Calcaterra. He's he's been out for a while. Richard Rogers was late coming back to practice. Although Grant, I mean, we were watching him. He was doing uh, resistance work with the band, yeah. and I mean, he looks close to coming back. Yeah, well, he's he better. He better. <laughs> yeah, and he's missed a lot of time. We talked to Jason Michael, the tight ends coach, after practice, and um, he spoke really highly of Noah to go. And and did he call him that? Oh, uh, he did. That would be a real giveaway that he's a big pod listener. <laughs> uh, and he he said that he's he he really had to change his physique. He said he wasn't really. He talk, just talked about how much fitter he is and more just fitter for a tight end and just kind of build his body into what a tight end needs to be. Um, but he, he's been really impressed as well. Uh, he's, I, should, I, should I fill people in on the Noah to go background? Because that was a joke from three years ago. It really was. Yeah. yeah. So he was an undrafted kid here, and I really liked him. And he started to make plays, and we thought maybe this kid has a chance to make the roster. And he didn't make the roster, and they wanted to bring him to the practice squad, but he ended up with the Colts and he played a little bit for them. I believe played four games his, in 2020, his rookie year. And then eventually the Eagles got him back and we we're all excited. And you see his name. It's a name where you're like, I don't even know. It's T O G I A I A I. Uh, I can't even say the letters in it, <laughs> but it's pronounced Tongi. I, but we always called him Noah Tagoa, and it's kind of stuck. And do you think I have a one time, one time I want to ask him if he's ever, like if word has gotten back to him that he's a, a favorite of this podcast was recruited to Oregon state to play basketball. I never knew that. Makes sense. Six, four. He had a great catch today. He can catch the ball and he's stacking days now. He is. Yeah, he is. Um, Grant Cal- Calcaterra has missed a lot of time. There's just, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of questions at tight end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really, you know, Dallas Goddard and probably Jack Stoll's on the team, but then do they keep Grant? Work? Like, I don't think it's crazy to think that one of the other guys could sneak in. Yeah, I, I think you could you could probably practice squad Grant Calcaterra. I think anybody's going anybody's to be snagging him. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's a shame because he was having a good camp. He was. And, and Jason Michael said he's been great about staying in the books and staying on top of the offense and meetings and asking questions, but – when you're a you know you're a late round rookie, you got to be on the field, and mm-hmm. he hasn't been. Gardner Minshew, who we talked about a little bit, overall hasn't had a very strong camp. Uh, has had, and Nick Sirianni was asked about his camp and brought up the deflection interceptions before this practice, and then we're watching today, and another one happens, and it wasn't. It's one of those plays where yes, it wasn't Gardner's fault necessarily he threw the pass and it got deflected and intercepted but it was behind the receiver and if he puts it where it's supposed to be it's probably not bobbled and intercepted but lance lenwa i guess that's how it's pronounced lenwa probably should have caught the ball yeah i agree that's yeah but he but i thought Minshew had a better day than he's had I mean, I, I thought he was pretty strong today. He had that one pass. It was late. It might have been the last play of practice. Uh, he had big Marvin Wilson bearing down on him. And even with him rushing in his face, he delivered a perfect strike over the middle of the field to Jack Stoll. Yeah, that was a great pass. Mm-hmm. And I like how Marvin Wilson's name is now. He's actually had his name legally changed. It's now big Marvin Wilson. <laughs> He's a big dude. Yes. And writes poetry. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we should else? have Marvin Wilson on a podcast just to read poetry. I'd love that. We won't even talk poetry football. corner. Yeah, Marvin's poetry corner. Uh, Britton Covey showed me a little toughness today. Yeah, he took a, a good shot from Zach McPherson. I don't think McPherson was even trying to like hit him hard, but Covey's not the biggest guy, and he kind of went flying, popped right back up, went back to the huddle. Next play, went right back to him, and he made another play. He's a tough dude. Mm-hmm. He used to taking hits. He does yeah. something every day that makes you feel like they're going to keep this guy. Mm-hmm. Every day yep. he shows up. I agree with that. 
uh, what else we have here? I saw one uh, from one play from a pony set uh, with two two running backs, and it was Jalen Hurts and shotgun flanked by Miles Sanders and uh, uh, Jason Huntley. The play wasn't a good one. They're the only running backs they have. Yeah, really. Uh, but I like that. I, I think there's some opportunity for two running back sets in this offense, and it's kind of been it's on the comeback a little bit, like league wide. Yeah, I mean teams used to uh, it's and it's two tailbacks it's like it's not yeah yeah it's not a you know it's not you know fullback out there right right so um it gives you some flexibility i mean all their receiver all their running backs can catch the ball so um i don't mind it i'm not gonna use it a lot yeah like, but it's, it's a nice wrinkle to have throw it out there sure yeah i like seeing those little things in practice it's like all right i i like the creativity and i think there's a place for it you like seeing them because you're like, oh, that's an observation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Every once in a while, they'll be in pistol, and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> do you find yourself counting like a practice? Oh, I got seven. All right, and you... No, I don't do that. Okay. But I can tell some days where it's going to be easier and some days where it's going to be harder to come up with yeah. them. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I, at the end, I just had some defensive notes. Teron Jackson has made some plays. He had a sack on Wednesday. He's flashing a little bit against some of these – backup tackles and the backup tackles aren't bad even though they're they've lost some depth i still give you know he's going against like josh sills who's a highly regarded udfa so uh, i like teron jackson and anything he gives them is kind of a bonus in terms of pass rush because they have such good guys at the top of that rotation they seem to like him a little bit mm -hmm. yeah um he's got some quickness yeah i, I like him yep yeah. uh reddick it was the first play of 11s I don't know how they didn't whistle it. it I, I'm, I'm starting to feel Jonathan Gannon's frustration. <laughs> Some of these plays, like, how are they letting it go on? It was clearly a sack. Yeah, that's a sack in your book. Like, Reddick is, like, sitting there next to Jalen Hurts talking to him. And you're like, well, that's a sack, guys. Yeah, we'll count as a sack. Yeah. In the official Eagle Eye stats, it was a sack. Right. Uh, my stupid observation. Did you like this one today? I thought it, was, it wasn't quite stupid enough. But... Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll try harder. Well, I'll try. Well, I, I notice a lot of the stupid observations are things that you say to me. Like, I guess you're like working your material. You know, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we were. But it's true. It, it's true. We talk about how big Jordan Davis is, and he is. I mean, he's a monster. It's the first thing everyone says when they see Jordan Davis that how big he is. Today, we he was signing autographs, and then Jordan Mailata walked over, and he go. Oh yeah, Jordan Mailata is a literal giant. He really like, is. He's he's significantly bigger than Jordan Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're both pretty big. Yeah, I don't want to shortchange Jordan Davis. He's six six, three forty. But Mailata is six eight, three seventy. Three seventy. I mean, he told Baldy last year he was three eighty. Did he? Yeah, he's a. Small I mean, he's. He whatever they he, I think they list him at three sixty two. He's above that. He's above that, and he's bigger than Jordan Davis. And yeah. I think we just like we're kind of used to Jordan Mailata now that the yeah the freak show part of it is kind of worn off. But yeah. he is massive. He really is. Yeah. All right, that's all the stuff from today. Okay. After practice, he talked to Jalen Rager, and it's our first time hearing publicly from Jalen Rager since October. October. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I looked it up, and that was the, the game where. He had some bad plays, and I give him a ton of credit because apparently it was his decision to come and talk to us and own up to it. You're talking about last fall? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I give him credit for coming out and talking to a bunch of guys he blocked on Twitter. <laughs> uh, it was cordial. Um, you know, uh, he wasn't um, – He's not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. And, you know, he's, he's worked hard. Um, I guess the main things – you know, I asked him about – the position he's in now is is a new one for him. You know, your first round pick, and now you're you're fighting for a, a roster spot and reps. And um, he said, "Yeah, that's the position I'm in." Um, he said, "I'll read a couple of quick quotes." Me personally, I love a good challenge. It's a humbling experience because you go from being a first rounder, a first rounder, to your battling. But I like challenges. Um, and I asked him. Is it best for you to be here? You know, would you like to go somewhere else and get a fresh start? And he said, I want to be here for the rest of my career, but it's a business. It's a business of production. He knows he hasn't produced. 
So I'm going to handle my end, and I'm going to let them handle theirs. Um, I thought he was more accountable than he has been. He didn't make excuses for his lack of production the, the last two years, his two years. Um, he said he's in a better, better mental place, said he's in the best shape he's ever been in, which uh, Aaron Moore had, had just said the same thing. Remember, Aaron was here um, mm -hmm. Doug's last year. Yeah. So Aaron's been with with Jalen Rager. One of just two holdovers yeah. of the main position coaches, yeah. him and Stout. Stout. Um, Stout will be here like as long as he wants. Whoever you know, whoever follows Sirianni is going to keep Stout. Um, really, probably was that the best thing Chip did? Right? Was hire Stout like the most important thing he did for the organization? Well, I mean, Lane was drafted in thirteen. He wasn't really that's GM a Howie yet. pick. That was a Howie pick. Um, Nelly was a was a chip yeah. chip pick, mm -hmm. helped him win a Super Bowl. And really, that chip staff. Yeah, Doug kept nine guys. Yeah, <laughs> nine That's crazy. Guys. Yeah, um, but anyway, um, he 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 said he said he just and he's dealt with a lot. Look, he he's had friends die. I mean, he was really good friends with um, Jeff Gladney. Jeff Gladney from the the cornerback from TCU who was drafted by the Vikings and was killed in a he was with Arizona he signed with Arizona's uh, terrible brutal. car accident and um, claimed the life of him and his girlfriend um, they were best friends he said that was the guy I worked out with he said we bought our first cars together um, you know we we just did everything together so working out it, I, I, he, that's the guy I worked out with um, he and he lost his grandmother Monte. Um, Monte Rager, his dad, former Eagle, his mom passed in, uh, I think he said in January. So, you know, he's been through a lot and he, and he's, you know, he said last year it, it affected him and he wasn't ready. He said, um, I, he said, you know, he admitted he wasn't in shape and, um, he said, just putting my head down and going to work, not really worrying about anything else, just focusing on myself. Last year, I was dealing with a lot. I wasn't really focused on my training. But this year, even dealing with a lot, it just motiva motivated me even more. Um, he talks about the how important the mental part of it is. It's not just being in shape. It's being mentally focused. He said, I'm here mentally now. It's easy to be out here. But physically, that's just a little part of the game, being here mentally. And he didn't finish, but he said it meant it's the most important part. I, I thought he was um, as transparent, I guess, or as open and as honest as he's been since we've ever talked to him. Mm -hmm. um, Anyone ask him about social media? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said. Yeah, like, that's my one thing with him. Yeah. It, it just feels like it's been such a distraction for him. Yeah, I didn't get into that in the story. Um uh, I miss it. So the way it, the way interviews work, it's like they have separate sections. So I was in a different section. Yeah. We split it up. So I, I didn't really get to hear most of it's kind of luck of the draw. They brought him to like the secondary interview area. We kind of take turns where we are. Um, but you know, he, he said uh I mean what he said was basically ignoring the fact that he tweeted John Clark. <laughs> he just basically said, I know I have to just stay focused and that can't be a part of my life. Yeah, um, it's just I mean but it still is. It's still yeah. obviously something that feels like it's just a pitfall for him. Yeah. And I get it. It's like people say things about you. Like I do it too. Like people say things about me and I'm like, it bugs me sometimes. Yeah. So, and and like for him, like he gets it, you know, a million times what either of us get. Right. But it's tough to not care about it. He did. Uh, I think I did transcribe that, even though I didn't use it. Let me see. Uh, I'll, I'll look for it. But um... it's just something that like, I think at this point in his career, he has to have the maturity to avoid it. Yeah. And he does seem more mature, um, but it's a process, you know, mm -hmm. and and um, he's still only 23. He was a young rookie. He was a young rookie, still only 23. Um, I, he's going to be in the league. I still believe it might be best for him to be somewhere else, um, fresh start. Uh, I, I, he's never going to be a great player, but I, still, I think he can play in the league, I, I think. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, uh, and you know. I. He always gets compared to Nelson Aguilar. I felt like I had a better feel that Nelson was going to make it through. Yeah, and be a decent NFL player than I have about Jalen. And that's not a shout out. It's just I had a better feeling watching Nelson. I was like, okay, you know, because and and he was really good in practice. Nelson. He, Nelson. Yeah, he was a great route runner. He understood how to get separation. Maybe he was never going to be a great player, but I felt like 
there's something there. And I see glimpses from Rager. I don't see the consistency. I don't see the polish as a receiver that I saw with Nelson. So maybe he could still – I mean, physically he's probably more gifted than I don't Nelly. Know. I mean, Nelly was faster and had I better Rager's size. I think probably more explosive. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Nelly could get open. He just couldn't – you know, I mean, Nelly to Sometimes me always – got too open. No, he's – what's that? Sometimes he got too open. He did. He had to think. Uh, to me, Nelly – always looked like a football player that was struggling. Like you could tell there was something there. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't get that. And I, I, I said that I don't get that with Jalen, uh, but you know, the fact that Nelly went to the Raiders and had a pretty good year, real good year, never surprised me. The fact that on February 4th, 2018, he really helped his team win a Super Bowl. Um, I did, that didn't surprise me. But if Rager caught those three passes in the fourth quarter uh, for first downs, that would shock me. But I still think he'll be in the league at least a couple more years. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice to hear from him. We talked to us. We talked to uh, Cam Jurgens today, who's mm-hmm. about to get a ton of first-team reps. Yeah. The more interesting thing, though, was hearing Jordan Davis talk about Cam Jurgens. Uh, he was asked about that that rep from the public practice. It kind of went viral. And he Jordan said, like, he, he, he wished that didn't go viral. He's like, because Cam has been really good. And even, honestly, even on that rep, it wasn't like it, the ball's probably out. <laughs> Ken did a good job, yeah, for the most part, and and he's handled Davis fairly well. So uh, it was cool to see Jordan be like, no, like this, he's a really good player. Uh, but he was also asked for the differences between with, between Jurgens and Kelsey, and he just said Kelsey just you can tell he's a vet. Just the little things and the knowledge of the game are just on a different level. Um, so with that in mind, it's pretty. It's a good sign then that Jurgens is going to get all this time. Jordan Davis is going. to – I mean, he's always fun to watch, but it's fun to talk to him. He's got a great personality. He's a really thoughtful kid, mm-hmm. and and uh, he's got really good perspective on a lot of things. I I, I love listening. I'll go back since I was. I like this. So of all the new players this year, whether they're draft picks, free agents, trades. Who do you enjoy talking to the most in these interview settings? Devin Allen. <laughs> because we sit there and talk about Rye Benjamin and Sidney McLaughlin and Grant Holloway and Trey Cunningham. But, no, I would say, actually, in, in seriousness, I would say um, Britton Covey. He's just such an interesting okay. guy, incredibly insightful and thoughtful and such such an interesting story. I mean, his grandfather is, like, this best-selling – and I'm, when best-selling, I mean 25 million copies yeah. of his – you know, his self-help book, um, The Seven Fundamental Principles of Success or whatever. It was well, what Nick writes is five core values. That'll be sell 30 million. <laughs> he just might. Uh, win a Super Bowl, he'll, he'll sell 30 million. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Covey's and, – and I like the way he's playing. I, I, I would say Covey. How about – who would you go with? A.J. Brown. Yeah. Hearing him – explain some of the nuance of what and he even caught himself we talked about this a little bit yesterday right. he even caught himself like giving away too much but i just appreciate the thoughtfulness in the answers and really explaining it so that an idiot like me can understand what he's talking about yeah with late hands or his process to run through the ball to to add some yak to his game mm-hmm. uh, he's been fun to talk to and learn from yeah yeah i think most of the new guys we talked to kaiser today most of the new guys are are Pretty interesting, insightful, intelligent. Yeah. It's fun to get to know new players. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of them this year. Yeah, there are. That are going to make big impact. Right. Yeah. No I, new coaches. No no new coaches. Anything else from today's session? That's no, I like here? talking to Aaron Moorhead. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, had some had some good things to say. And Jason Michael as well. I always enjoy talking to the assistant coaches. We don't get to do it very often. Um, he really talked up Jack Stoll and Noah Tagoa. Um, Jack, as far as his, it, it said both of them really reshaped them themselves physically. Mm-hmm. Really worked with Ted Rath and his staff. To, uh, it, it wasn't just a fitness issue, but just being prepared to play tight end in the NFL. Um, he I liked, think Jack was I, maybe both of them. I mean, it was Jack and Noah were out with. Um, it was Jack and someone else. It could have been Tyree because he was hurt, or maybe Tyree and it was it was Jack and someone else went with Dallas Goddard to tight end you. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he 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 spoke at length about uh, Noah um, Tangaye. Is that the actual Tangiai? Tangiai. Um. And just how far he's come. He's in his third year now. Um. So 
and he's played a little bit here and there, but um, I think he's been really good. I mean, he's probably been as a receiver. I mean, he's the second best, you know, yeah. uh, since he's Cal- been better than Jay Jaw. Yeah. Yeah. Who everyone wants to know how he's doing. Yeah. I asked him about Jay Jaw and, you know, he just said, look, it's, there's, there's parts of tight end that relate to wide receiver and he's really comfortable doing those things and the, and the other things he's learning. He says it's, it's a, it's a process. Um, so um, I give Jay Jaw credit for, for trying, um, you know, he, he's practicing hard. He's working, but it's a, it's a I lot. guess he's going to end up somewhere back as a wide receiver. Yeah. And he, I even asked, I asked Jay Jaw that when I talked to him and he, I said, are you done with wide receiver? Are you tight end like forever now? He said, no, <laughs> he said, this is, this is, if they ask me to play receiver tomorrow, I'll, I'll be a receiver, I'll, you know, but I think that's probably most likely, but give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's all I've got. So it was a good day. Yeah. Always a good day. Never haven't had a bad one yet. We talked to Derek Barnett too. We should mention that. Or at least we tried. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a shy guy. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure his career here hasn't helped him come out of his shell. Um, what I will say about Barnett is like, it, it wasn't like a contentious thing. It was just like, he's shy. He didn't want to talk about himself. He was happy to talk about his teammates right. and his teammates love him. I, I think that's something that kind of gets underrated when we talk about Barnett, like his, his teammates really like him, not just as a person, like they like how hard he plays. They like some of the things he does that don't get noticed. And we all know the, the situation he's been a disappointing player here, but, um, He's back, and it's not. It, I don't know if it was the best situation for him to come back, but he said he wanted to come back and be with his teammates again. And if he he does a much better job of insulating himself than other guys who have been first round misfires. Who's who's had a more disappointing career, Barnett or Rager? Considering that Barnett was the 14th pick and Rager, Rager was the 21st. Um, probably Rager. Probably Rager. Yeah. Barnett has at least given them snaps and games. And Rager played 750 snaps last year. Yeah, but Barnett's done it over five years. Well, Rager's only been here two years. Sure. And maybe in three years, <laughs> say. you think he's going to be here? No. You know, no. Uh, they both have been disappointing. Yeah. So it was like levels of yeah. disappointment, uh, you know. Yeah, they've both been disappointing. But I, I do think at least Barnett, you know you're getting effort. You I think you, Rager gives you effort on Sundays. I just don't think he's giving it to yeah. you to get, you know. Barnett gives to you all the time. Gives what? It gives you the effort all the time. Yeah. Like, he's he hasn't been a good player, but he, it's not for lack of trying. That's that's probably true. I think Rager's lack of effort has come during the offseason. And if anything, like Barnett – gosh, look at us talking about Derek Barnett again. Um, it's interesting. The, one me. of the things that's made him – a target for a lot of people is a product of him being too aggressive. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. too, too all out. And if you had to pick one or the other, I'd take that side of it. That's fair. Yeah. All, all right. right. Yeah. Nothing like finishing a happy podcast with two major disappointments. Two guys that are still, still at it and still, still trying. All right. If you enjoyed the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. That's all the time we have for today. For Rube, I'm Dave. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>